Okay guys, this is Stephanie Janicek. Welcome back to the Smuggler's Cantina. Um, today, we're going to discuss uh, Galaxy's Edge isn't doing so well. So, in the lead-in, I basically uh, explained that um, uh, a friend of mine sent me a message uh, telling me that one of the Imagineers who happens to be his uncle who works at Disney, putting together all their little you know, neat little art projects and all the little characters, you know, emo, you know, uh, em, uh, animatronic characters, basically said that Bob Iger's already looking at Galaxy's Edge as being a failure. Okay, so this leads up to this uh, lovely, lovely uh, article that um, SC Reviews, uh, our Australian friend, one of the greatest members and one of the original members of the fandom menace uh found was given and i'm gonna tell you what this is now this is one uh patron's observation over a few days however it says a lot because i've heard i've heard this stuff from other people so star wars galaxy's edge and disneyland not busy on opening weekend you can walk right into star wars galaxy's edge right now at disneyland without a problem on the first week, the land has been open to the public without reservations. Disneyland and Disney California Adventure both seem to be empty. Standby lines for some of the most popular rides in the parks are the lowest I've ever seen. This is the middle of the summer when Disneyland Resort is usually packed to capacity. What is going on here? Okay. Um, But this does bring up a very interesting question. Why is Galaxy's Edge not busy? All right, I'll go back to the article in a bit. The reason why it's not busy is there's nothing there. Uh, the Millennium Falcon ride, as cool as I think it would be to see it, uh, because it is my favorite ship. It's Han Solo's ship. This ship personally means a lot to me. Um, I... From what I've heard, you go into it and you're like, meh. You know, if you get to be the pilot, that's pretty cool. You get pretty, you know, you get to be the one to hit light speed, that's pretty cool. But it's meh. There's nothing. They're not doing any any anything with it. They're they're. It's basically you walk in, you see the. You see the, you know where the the, the main, hold, the, the main cabin. There's the uh, Dejaric table. Uh, there's the bunk beyond, uh, the acceleration couch. You'd think there'd be something really cool there. You'd think it would feel like Han and Chewie would be back in a minute and they get really pissed off finding a str bunch of strangers on their ship. It's it's nothing like that. Uh, I'll give you an analogy. I don't live too far away from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. At the Gettysburg battlefield, right on the edge, you can actually go to Ike Eisenhower's house. President Eisenhower, General Eisenhower's house. You can get a tour. They've left it everything the way Mamie and Ike had it. Like, you walk in and you're like, they're going to be home. His TV is still there. Uh, he's got his Black Angus uh, uh, barn d down the walkway a little ways. And it still smells like, you know, there are cows hanging out there. It's pretty much ret to go should they decide to come home from shopping or you know whatever the the millennium falcon at galaxy's edge should feel the same way and it doesn't there's no sense of the captain's going to be here pretty soon why are we here he's going to kill us you know you know you're you don't get a uh, you know you don't get a sense of of that the, the ownership if you know what i mean and i think that's what's lacking so it's boring i mean big deal um the drinks are too expensive at the cantina the, the servers are rude um it's it's from what i could tell it's a great big giant money pit okay so we've got that going on and it's lacking star wars you would think that they would have the most Eisley cantina a replica of what george lucas put together Luke's uncles, you could go from Tatooine to Yavin, the base at Yavin, to 
and or, or to Hoth, to, if they want a Millennium Falcon ride, how about have it, not, you could have a static model of the ship so people could go inside and make it actually feel like Han and Chewie are there. Uh, somewhere in the ship, you know, have, you know, like voices over the thing. You could hear them arguing about something somewhere. You know, do something that makes it feel like it's really real. But you could have like a, a, a ride where you get into the ship and they're taking you through the asteroid field. Okay, how about the first Death Star? Obi-Wan and uh, Darth Vader's last fight. Okay, we'll go through that. Then we'll go to the trench run for the Death Star. That would be a great ride. Okay, then we'll go to um, Endor. We got Hoth, we got Endor. Uh, we got the Emperor's throne room where you can actually be actually witness Luke and Vader fighting the last fight. Okay, all of that would be really cool. All right, he, he walks running around. Well, we could go to the prequel stuff. We could have Naboo, we could have Coruscant, the nightclub, the Senate, the Jedi Temple, uh, Dagobah for Empire. That would all, see, you gotta have Star Wars if you're gonna do a Star Wars park. Galaxy's Edge is not Star Wars. So, all right, just a second. I'm gonna okay. read a little more to this. Let's go on, slash film.com. Disney was fearing the worst when it came to crowd expectations for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. There were rumors of internal projections that saw the park reaching capacity for the first couple of months of the opening. Naturally, this had fans wondering how Disney Parks Logistics would handle the opening uh, company of the first Star Wars land. As you may know, they handled it with a five-prong approach, extensive blackout days for cast members and annual pass holders, creating a new limited time attractions in Disney California Adventure to lure away crowds. These include bringing back Soarin' Over California, adding Mickey's Flower Ma Magic to Hollywood Land, and the addition of shows like The Tale of the Lion King. Three-week preview period, which required reservations, to went to the land for four, four our time periods. A boarding pass process which would allow Disneyland guests to enter a virtual queue via Disneyland app to enter the land as crowds dissipate. A huge parking garage, a tram loading area to help accommodate the expected masses. The tram loading area is now open and can be seen from in my video above. This thing has a video. Uh, while the new parking lot is expected to be open any day now. On the day the land opened without reservations, it hit capacity and boarding process went on as promoted. But then something strange happened. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has not required boarding groups since the launch day and Disneyland has been strangely empty. We traveled to the park earlier this week and not only was Disneyland empty, but Galaxy's Edge was the most uncrowded I've seen yet. Okay, and here's two, here's, here's two things going on. First of all, uh, Maybe people are just getting sick of Disneyland. Maybe people are finally realizing what a uh, a money hole the place really is. Second of all, again, Galaxy's Edge is not Star Wars. Okay, Galaxy's Edge is anything but Star Wars. Uh, it w it was once was told people could go and cosplay. Now we're not now pe now pe fans who want to aren't allowed to. Um, the cosplayers are rude. Uh, you know, you're not allowed to be, basically you're not allowed to have fun. Who wants to go see that? Who wants to go to a Star Wars land that has absolutely nothing to do with Star Wars, the mythos, the characters that made it so great? We do have the sequel uh, trilogy characters. You can run into Kyle Ron anytime you want, or Ray, and you'll see Chewbacca. It's a pretty bad Chewbacca uh, costume, but but that's it. Um, BB-8's there, but no R2-D2, no C-3PO, no Han, no Leia, no Luke, no Vader, which people would want to go see him. No Emperor, which would be freaking awesome. No Obi, no, no Obi-Wan, no Yoda, no Qui-Gon Jinn, no, uh, uh, 
you know, any of them. No, uh, I mean, you think of the characters that I, that I, I haven't named. You could have the park from the prequel trilogy to the OT, and you'd have people filled, having a blast, okay, wanting to spend their money, wanting to go into Star Wars, uh, you know, X-Wing fighter trench run, okay, wanting to go do that, okay, wanting to go on a Millennium Falcon ride that takes you through the asteroid field, wanting to get pictures taken with a, a Luke Skywalker a cosplayer, uh, or a Mace Windu cosplayer, or a Darth Vader, uh, you know, stormtroopers, you know, uh, Imperial officers, uh, uh, rebel officers, rebel soldiers. Instead, we get characters no one gives a shit about. And you wonder why it's empty. There you go. Also, it doesn't help that the things you use to advertise Galaxy's Edge, TLJ, Soylo, a Soy War story, suck ass. Okay? And frankly, I know that Bob Iger knows that. All right? So... Basically, that's that's the thing. It costs too much. There's nothing Star Warsy about it. I mean, I really don't envision myself having a good time uh, hanging out with a character I, I despise as much as I despise Kyle Ron. I, I mean, what what does someone who looks at Han Solo as that guy want to have anything to do with the character that killed him, his son? You know, but there he is. Thanks for inviting all the Star Wars fans. You know, I mean, and that's why it's actually failing. So I'm gonna leave uh, this article in a in a pin note uh, so you guys can read it yourselves. Um, but you know, you know, I'll give you something else. Ichibaka has a blog post called Disney, Star Wars is Dead. And I'm going to say it right now. And I know a lot of people are going to go, no, it's not, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Look at Galaxy's Edge. Look at the lack of enthusiasm and lack of buzz for The Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Uh, the story group, I blame Pablo Hidalgo. I blame the stupid little wife. I blame all of them. I blame Ryan Johnson. I blame Kathleen Kennedy for this travesty that's befallen Star Wars. Why? If you don't listen to the customers, if you don't respect what came before it and uplifted it and learn from it, build on it, if all you do is destroy it, kill the past, remember, you're going to reap a whirlwind of karmic debt that right now is falling on their heads. And the people at Disney are paying for it now. Disney parks, okay? No one wants to go to Star Wars land if there's no Star Wars, okay? I don't want an overpriced, uh, you know, crappy lightsaber. I can go to all your sabers and have them build one of my specifications, you know? I, I can't buy a blaster there. Heavens to Betsy. Oh, holy shit, they're selling guns. They're not guns, they're, they're toys. You know, but you can't buy one there. Oh, but you know what? 400 and some odd dollars, you can buy Luke's actual robes that he wore in the beginning of Return of the Jedi. They do have that. I think someone should buy them and give them to Mark Hamill. Okay. And... You know, and that's it. That's the reason why Disney Star Wars is dead. Uh, you know, one point, let's see, it brought in, what was it? All told, they think they're doing really well. The, the shells are saying they're doing really well. It, 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 you know, Lucasfilm has earned one point blah, 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 billion dollars. They bought, Disney bought it for 4.3 or 5 billion. So they're, uh, still in the red. Their books aren't selling. The The comic books are laughable. Uh, the movies are, are a joke, except for Rogue One. Um, I mean, look at TLJ. TLJ was a 
was a success. 1.3 billion. Um, if you take everything that it it caused to produce it, the marketing, what uh, the theaters took out, it only probably brought in about $200 billion, $200 million, $200 million, okay? The next movie that came out, Soy Low, A Soy War Story, was so badly received, it lost $200 million. I've gone through why that movie sucked, why nobody wanted to see it, you know? The TLJ backlash, Alden Ehrenreich, shitty script, shitty attitude by writers and Lucasfilm. Fans being disgusted and staying away. All right. So, yeah, Disney Star Wars is dead. Can it be resurrected? You know, I I agree with uh, Ichibaka. I think if George Lucas came back in some capacity, decanonized everything they put, to, put in there, and, you know, somehow was able to put his version of the sequel trilogy and mesh it into a, a streamlined version of the EU. Hey, you know, I'm the first person to say the EU wasn't perfect, but considering this trash we're getting shoved in our faces is a hell of a lot better. The characters are more defined. They followed the, the they followed their character arcs from the, from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. They're not in this shit. All right. Again, it's like uh, the social justice Taliban have taken over Lucasfilm and basically uh, blown up everything that was sacred in Star Wars. The force, the mythology, the spirituality, the characters, the history of, of the galaxy, the whole nine yards. You know, a cultural cornerstone, a, a piece of cultural tap, a uh, uh, of our cultural tapestry was set on fire because they thought they could do better than the person who created it. Sorry guys, sorry. So I will also leave Itchy's blog too because it's great. This is Steph signing out. See you around the galaxy, see you around the cantina. Please remember to tip the wiki bartenders 20% and no fights in the cantina, you take that outside. No gunfights in the cantina, you take that shit out in the street. No droids, no bounty hunters, no Raylos, no clone, Cloned hand theory, Ray nobody, fat Kevin Smith poop sniffing fanboys. See you on the galaxy scoundrels. Oh, and this just from Instagram. Uh, Data Racer just uh, posted this. A uh, bunch of things. I'm going to save them. Uh, from Bloomberg. Big surprise at Disneyland. Star Wars land, not so long waits. Why are Star, Star Wars crowds so low? Uh, and that might be. Disney, Disney Tours blog. So let's go to the next one. Here are a bunch of uh, Twitters. Uh, Disney, all right. Travis, Cash, Clash, Cat, whatever. Who can help me get my lightsaber fixed that I got at Savvy's Workshop? It's defective and didn't make, a, make it out of the park. Not happy. It's $200 blade. Okay, just FYI, I'm just literally reading some of these. Um, offhand, Disney. Something must be wrong with my Savvy's lightsaber blade. Colors appear more red. The blade flickers regularly when lit. I haven't dueled with anyone with it or done anything, but it's super sad to see the blade already dying. Well, I don't know, maybe you could meditate over the, the kyber crystal. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone have, all right, this other guy, Tom Bricker, Tom Bricker, does anyone have a lightsaber from Savvy that has become, uh, possessed? <laughs> it's in the bag, turned off, and it will just randomly make sounds. I can only assume this is a feature. It wants to be taken out and swung around, but I also don't want it burning the house down. All right, Jadon, check on. Jaden Chacken. For $200, you'd expect them to have good quality control. <laughs> I'm, these are all going. Yes, you'll see these. Uh, I got to use these. This is just, hey, you know what? Guess what? 
you guys are in trouble, Lucasfilm. You, you guys are in trouble with this, Disney. And you deserve it. You deserve all of it. This is Steph. I'll see you on the Galaxy Scouts. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please remember, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit that bell so you know when I upload more content. Hit those, those like buttons again. Remember, if you hit the like button, you'll get notifications. And then I won't be getting people going. I'm not getting notifications. Also, please remember to share away here. We share away if you love Star Wars. And upcoming video will likely be reading Raylo with stuff. Enjoy. I'll see you later, guys. See you around the galaxy. He's gone.